Welcome back view devs. In today's video, we're going to be making a Kanye West quote generator using Axios in a Vue 3 app. Not only are we going to get some deep inspiration from Ye himself, but we're going to learn how to connect our Vue apps to APIs and even learn how to better organize your Vue project with reusable API calls. To do all this, we're going to use Axios, one of the most popular HTTP request libraries for JavaScript. Let's start coding. The first thing we have to do is install Axios into our project. So let's open up a terminal and say npm install Axios. Then we can go inside our view component and import Axios from Axios. Let's make our export default and setup method. And as soon as our component is created, so it's signed the setup method, let's call our API. This is as easy as saying axios.get and passing in our URL to send the get request, which for us is api.kanye.rest. Next, we can use a dot then to wait for the response of our request, and this dot then will take in an argument called response that will have the response of our request. All right, so now we're getting a response from this API, so let's go ahead and see what it is. To do this, we'll store it as a ref. So let's import ref from view, create a const quote equals a ref with the default value of an empty string, and then inside our dot then, we can set quote dot value to response. Don't forget to return quote from setup, and finally, let's print it up in our template and italics and surrounded by some quotes. And of course, we need to tell people who said this amazing quote. All right, let's check it out and see what we have in our browser. So we have this pretty big JavaScript object. We can see our quote here, but there's all this extra information like the response code of our request. For our Kanye quote generator, we're only really interested in the quote itself, which is this data.quote value. So back inside our script section, instead of getting response, Let's get specifically response.data.quote. All right, if we go back, we'll see that we're only getting the quote and this is starting to look like a real web page. Awesome. So this is how we can use Axios with promises, but another way that I honestly prefer that we can use Axios in our view app is with the async await patterns. Inside setup, let's start off by commenting out our current Axios code. Then we'll create a method called load quote and make it asynchronous. Inside, we can use our Axios get method. But this time, we want to use async to wait for it to finish, and then store that result inside a constant called response. Once again, we can set our quote.value to be response.data.quote, and that's it. If we look at our app, it works exactly the same, but in our code, we're using the async await pattern. Awesome. One great thing about Axios is how easy it makes error handling. In the async await pattern, we can add error handling by surrounding our API call with a try catch. That's it. With the promises syntax, we can easily add a dot catch after the dot then to capture any errors. Now that we know how to send get requests with Axios, let's look at sending post requests. To do this, we're going to be using the JSON placeholder mock API calls. And if we look at their documentation, which is linked in the description, they give us a slash post route that we can send a post request to with a title, body, and user ID. Okay, let's make a button that will trigger this API call. Back in our view component, let's go to the template and make a button that says create post. And when it's clicked, it calls a method called create post. Down in our script, we can make this create post method and return it from setup. Here, similar to our get request, we just have to say axios.post, pass in our URL, which is the JSON placeholder.typeofcode.com slash posts, and then we can copy and paste the placeholder data from their documentation. Next, let's say dot then, get the response of our request, and for now we can just print out response. All right, let's try this out. If we click our button, we'll see that the console is logging a ton of information. We're getting some data back from our request, a 201 response, and a lot more info telling us that our post request was successful. And that's how we can use Axios not only for get requests, but post requests too. So one tip that I use in all of my projects to help organize my API calls is to create a services folder that will contain my API calls. And in this folder, there are two types of files. There's an api.js file that will create an Axios instance with a certain URL. And then I'll create an API file for each different type of functionality. And these are more specific files that organize my code into easy to find modules. This has several benefits. First, by creating one api.js file that creates your Axios instances, it means that your base URL is set in one place. Meaning that if you want to change your base URL, for example, between development and production servers, you only really have to change it here. So let's create our services slash api.js file. Inside, we import Axios from Axios, and let's say export default as a method that takes in our URL. And by default, we want to set our URL to our Kanye API. In this method, we want to return axios.create, which creates an Axios instance, 
and then set our base URL to URL. And that's all for this file. Next, let's make a kanyeapi.js file and import an API from api.js. We create our export default object, and the first thing we want to do is create a method called getQuote. And all this does is return API and make sure you invoke it because it is a function. And this gives us an Axios instance with our default base URL of the Kanye API. Then we can treat this like any other Axios instance. So let's say .get and then pass in a slash to get our quote. Then inside app.view, we can make our component use this new file instead of creating Axios all on its own. Let's import our Kanye API. And in load quote, we just have to change it from using our Axios method to our built-in reusable load quote method. And that's it. If you load up our app, we're still loading in quotes perfectly. Next, let's move this create post Axios functionality into its own reusable method. So back in Kanye API.js, let's add create post to the export default, and this will take the data for the post request as an argument. Similar to our get request, we want to return our API to get an Axios instance, but this time we need to override the default URL value and pass it in our JSON placeholder URL. Great. Next, we can just call .post, give it the path of posts, and then send the data that's being passed into this method. Easy as that. Back in app.view, let's change create post to use the async await pattern so we can say const response equals await Kanye API .create post, and then copy and paste this JSON stringify to pass our data. Then afterwards, let's just console.log response again. Now, when we click our button, we'll see that our dedicated API files are working, giving us a 201 code meaning that we had a successful post. The great thing about moving our API calls out of these view components and into their own files is that we can now use these API calls wherever we want across our app, giving us more reusable and scalable code. So that's all for this video. I hope it helped give you an idea of how to use Axios inside of your view apps, and also how to write scalable code that future you will definitely thank present you for. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe to help support the channel and let me continue making free view tutorials. I'll see you in the next one.